So let me bring uh, to the show Philip Schreiber, Blue Line Features, Senior Strategist, Blue Line Features. Good morning, Phil, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Phil, let me just kick off very quickly with, with the macro data because, of course, if we didn't have the war here in Europe, this, is got, this was about to be the most, the major story of the day because we do see once again inflation and pressures to the upside uh, in the US. And, and probably the most important point is that we do see it uh, month over month data, both core and, and normal PC headline inflation. So I was wondering what's your first take and what do you think is supposed to be the Fed's reaction? Well, yeah, as soon as the data came out, there was a couple different things that kind of stood out to me. One, we saw bonds continue to sell off on that news, which means that those interest rate hike expectations have come right back uh, front and center. Also, we saw the consumer spending data come out better than expected, and that's what accelerated the U.S. equities higher. So the belief is, is that consumer spending increases, the path to the economy coming back is, is still alive. Um, and, and, and do you think, actually, we saw a little bit of statement yesterday uh, from different, um, you know, Fed governors and few of them are suggesting that probably the right, the correct approach, Willem specifically, is to hike rates by one percentage, po uh, by one percentage points um, until June. So do, do you agree with this or do you think it's too aggressive considering that the, the, the stagflation talks are here? Yeah, if you look at so economic data will decelerate going forward until about May and June. And it's going to get tougher as as the year goes on when the Fed is tightening into that declining economic cycle. If you look at um, you know the the Fed cast model that tells you what the expectations are for the interest rate hike about a month ago it was a 60% chance that the March hike would be a 50 basis point hike coming into yesterday's morning it dropped all the way down to 6%. But now that you see that Ukraine and Russia appear to be going to engage in some constructive talks, now bonds are selling back off. Those interest rate hike expectations are coming right back. So I think 50 basis points is definitely still on the table. Um, let me ask you, uh, first of all, before we move, of course, to energy market, um, on the other side, what are your expectations in terms of, um, you know, markets reaction of everything that's going on in Ukraine? Do you think that more panic selling is here or what is the market suggesting with this sudden surge in, in, in futures, in stock futures? This is, this is specifically wartime volatility. So volatility is going to remain high and it's going to remain high for a while. I mean, people are really on edge and you can see they panicked out of the market over the last couple of days, and now they're panic buying back in. The U.S. equities, though, they've got so much resistance going higher that I think you re really, if you are concerned at all, you need to lighten up on any kind of significant rally. And of course, the energy market, which is extremely interesting. We do see uh, crude oil prices hovering um, around the $100 per barrel, which is uh, certainly very high levels. But the brand is at $97.50 per barrel compared to the $104 per barrel that we saw yesterday. Uh, US oil at 92.80, off about eight tenths of a percent. So uh, I was wondering, what is your uh, short term target? We are definitely going to scale in on oil for our clients, but we like to get the front month WTI below $90. So call it 89, 88, and we'll scale all the way in if it drops down to 85. The only way you get that movement down is if you get that Iran uh, nuclear nuclear deal and some more oil flows on. As far as Russia, they can't take them off as swift because they deal all their energy and that's how they receive compensation. So you're seeing energy demand out of Europe had really significantly picked up in the last 48 hours as they're trying to um, secure any kind of supplies that they need. And on the other side, we do see also gold prices slightly lower today. Uh, we're talking about a futures, of course, half a percent lower. So where do you see we're going to see the gold yeah, um, in, in the following weeks? You had that panic buy yesterday, obviously. I mean, that was incredible news, you know, terrible situation. And then it was that that decline on expectation for the 50 basis point rate hike. That was the one, two, 
you know, tailwind that it got that shot it up to 1975 on the panic buy. We always encourage our clients not to chase these markets, wait for them to come back to you. So I think that gold could settle back down, get into the 1860s. That's where we're going to look to scale in because we know that the Fed, the number of rate hikes, we do not agree with that they will be able to do, you know, seven, eight, nine rate hikes. We do not agree with that. We think it's closer to three or four rate hikes before they stop citing financial uncertainties. So so do you think that the Fed has to consider also what is going on uh, here in Europe? 100%. It, 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 it will impact the global economy. They're trying to deflect and say that it won't, but it will. And, you know, we are also concerned that, you know, this can lead the path where China tries to take over Taiwan. So we are very cautious on, on U.S. equities, again, lightening up on the law on the, if you're long, and then on gold scaling and on declines. Are you concerned about energy prices in the medium to, to long term? Because, uh, of course, inflationary pressures tied to energy prices is not something that the Fed um, is able to control. Well, yesterday, as soon as I saw the news, I went and filled up all three of uh, my gas tanks in my cars. So, you know, I am concerned about rising energy prices. And across the U.S., you look at, you know, gasoline prices are continuing to move higher. I think we're at three dollars fifty four cents for the national average. But you get into, you know, certain states, they're four or five dollars. So there are there are steep concerns about it. Thank you very much, Philip Schreiber, Senior Analyst, Blue Line Futures. Thank you for joining us and have a great weekend. You too. Take care.